Hey everyone, welcome back to this episode of Cart Crazy. Well, back at it with a 2013 model this time, Club Car Precedent. A couple things uh, rolling around in my brain for this one, not quite sure how it's going to all turn out, but that's pretty normal for me. I usually just fly by the seat of my pants. I'll show you what we're working with and uh, what's inside this crate on the back seat. So come along for the ride, let's get started. All right, so 2013, this is going to be the newest of all the carts that I've been uh, messing with over the last several months. And this one, pretty basic. Um, it does have the white top, um, which that's the first one. They've always been tan, just like the seats. So I'm not going to use that on this cart, but I will save it for a future cart. Um, your normal... Um, you know, tan seats, white body, plastic is in pretty good shape on it. It does have um, a little scratch on this side, which we'll take care of. I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Clean that up real good. Uh, it does have the tinted windshield, which I can't decide if I like or don't like, but we'll figure that out later. It does also have a race car rear view mirror. I like that. So we can see who's behind us. Um, does not have batteries, so I have named this one the Flintstone Mobile because I literally um, had my foot kicking outside trying to move as I was sitting in the seat. It worked out quite well actually, I gotta be honest. Um, so no batteries. So what are we gonna do? Well, if we open up this crate, I'll show you what I've got in store for that. It's not, it's probably well, maybe it is what you're thinking, but I'm excited about it. So it does have the back seat. It's the flip down, which is completely shot. Well, not completely shot. It's it's rough. It's broken. If you look at this side, um, it kind of goes downhill because somebody either sat on it when it was open or put too much weight on it. Um, I've got some ideas of what I might do with that. For now, the back seat's going to come off. And I'm going to put the traditional roof struts in um, because if you watch another episode that I'm working on, I'm actually building a uh, crate for Mr. Cooper here to ride in. And that's going to mount on the back here. Uh, oh, there's Jordy. He's all excited about the neighbor. So as I was saying before I got rudely interrupted by Mr. Jordy, uh, the back seat is going to come off for now. I'm probably going to reuse it. I'm going to put the traditional struts in um, with no back seat kit at all just because I can't use the basket or the dog carrier that I'm making for Cooper and the back seat at the same time. So we'll mess around with that a little bit. Um, and also I picked up um, some, I'm going to do some more upholstery work. I picked up these black and blue diamond stitching. I was going to kind of go with a blue theme on this one. And I also snagged these wheels, um, which I thought were sharp. I have black lug nuts for those. So that's one option. The other option is um, I ordered new seats for both the front and the rear, and also a blue body that would kind of match those um, seat covers that I got. And I also ordered new seats. So I've got a lot of options going with this one. But for now, we're going to mess around. I'm going to show you what's in the crate. We're going to at least see if the thing runs and moves and does what it's supposed to, and we'll go from there. All right, what's in the box? Uh, this is a Roy Pow lithium conversion. Uh, Roy Pow is what I wanted to do on the last cart, Mater, or Tum Mater as it ended up, but being that it was an older cart, it had all the electronics in the middle underneath the seat, and the Roy Pow is too wide. Um, to fit in there with the electronics in the middle without a lot of modification. So that's why I ordered the Allied Lithiums for the last one, which is fine. They were a great kit. It worked out really well. I was really happy with the performance. But I've also heard a lot of good things about this Roy Powell kit. Um, and this one will fit in here because it's a newer model. The electronics are behind, um, kind of tucked behind the battery compartment. So we have room for it. It's also going to leave us room for storage under there. So we'll crack this open. I'll show you a couple simple things to do to get that mounted in, and uh, we'll go from there.
Here we are, uh, Roy Power Unit got the uh, cover off of the case. You'll see the positive and negative, pretty straightforward there. Um, this is actually for uh, the battery meter, uh, which is going to be handy because uh, there's enough cable here. We can run that up and put it in the dash. On my last kit, I didn't do that um, for a couple of reasons, but I ended up mounting it under the seat, so you had to flip the seat up to check the battery condition. But this one is going to be right up in the dash. It does have a main power switch, and just from some reviews I've seen, the hardware that comes with it isn't overly impressive. I may or may not use that. Uh, we might have to just use some regular uh, hardware that I have here. It does have the mounting bracket, which was included. And basically what that does is goes under here, lifts it up a little bit so it'll mount in uh, down in the, in the battery compartment. You don't have to use this, is my understanding. If you trim the battery compartment, it'll sit down flat in there, but we'll go over that once we get it. Does uh, the, like I said, the main power switch is here, so that'll fire up our 48 volts once we get everything mounted in. Um, the charger is very similar looking to the one from the Allied kit. Um, it's going to have, I'll get this unboxed a little bit more, but it's going to have your power plug. But the main thing is you buy the correct adapter for whatever cart you have, and this, of course, is our, um, our club car adapter because that's what we have so everything there is super straightforward I'm really happy with the way everything looks there just like uh, as I was hoping for uh, the weight of that whole unit is about the weight of one battery um, that we you would normally have in here so you save a ton of weight that's 73 pounds I think uh, I've never I guess I've never weighed them but I think an 8 volt battery is probably 60 pounds maybe maybe a little bit more um, and once we get down in here, that battery unit is going to sit on this side. And like I said, I think we can trim here and here and get that sitting right down on the floor if we want. Otherwise, we'll use those brackets, which will keep it up off the floor, and we'll be able to mount it in that way. Um, positive and negative are going to go, obviously, on the positive and negative on the battery. However, and we'll get into this a little bit in more detail a little later on, um, you do have to take the negative cable that runs to the OBC or the onboard computer and cut that and plug that directly into the negative side and we'll get into that in detail a little bit more but if you have a 2013 or older cart it's necessary for the battery to charge correctly so we'll get into that here in a little bit okay I did go ahead and set the unit down in here and just as I suspected um, we've got some plastic and things in the way on this side would be really the only thing we'd have to trim and then we could literally bolt it right to the floor so I'm undecided if I want to trim that or if I want to use the supplied bracket which would lift it up above that so I'm still thinking on that but otherwise it's just going to be our positive and our negative but we still have to unplug uh, and reroute that wire for the OBC I've pulled the cover back of the electronics and um, of course this is dusty and dirty I'll get this cleaned up but I wanted to show you uh, the black wire that I'm talking about so the black wire is easy to uh, detect because it's gonna have this plug-in on here now what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna leave myself a, an inch or a couple inches I'm gonna cut this here I'm gonna pull this back through because it's in this harness right here from your main charging plug-in I'm gonna pull that out I'm gonna make an eyelid on there and that and the negative are both going to go together on the negative side of our Roy Pow unit and that's how the smart charger will work so what we're doing is we're bypassing the onboard computer because normally the computer controls the charger on these carts but with our new Roy Pow charger um, it's all done internally in this charger so that's why we're doing that otherwise you won't charge your Roy Pow unit correctly so I'm gonna get that done and still undecided how I'm going to get it situated in here, but I wanted to show you that before I forget.
so I decided to use the feet or the brackets that came with a little bit of finesse with the sawzall and the grinder and it actually sits down in there really good I have seen where some people actually trim this side to get it to go forward a little bit but we've got clearance back there so I don't really see a need to do that I have not bypassed the OBC yet but I did get it hooked up just so we can see where we're at um, I've got it in the tow position obviously when you're doing anything electrical it's always good to do that to turn it on you have to press and hold for three seconds green light will come on we'll be able to put it in our run position turn our key on and see if we have any movement okay well that is about as easy as it gets and uh, I really like the way it fits in there it leaves you all this room over here for storage some people also put their charger and mount it permanently in there. I'm not going to do that because I like to keep the charger outside just because it do, does create a little bit of heat when it's charging. Still have to do our onboard computer bypass. Like I said, I just wanted to see if it was going to run and move and do what it's supposed to. It's super light so I can take it in and out of there, no problem. They say if you're going to leave it sit longer than five days, you should shut the main switch off. Just some information for you there. So. There you go, Roy Powell battery install, pretty simple. I'll show you that OBC bypass here in just a second. Here's the wire we need to cut for our onboard computer bypass. This is just a quick connector which I'm going to eliminate and remove. If I ever wanted to convert this cart back to conventional batteries, all I have to do is put a butt connector on these two and we'd be ready to go for a regular charger. I'm going to pull this wire out of this loom and bring it to the front of the battery compartment because that's going to go to our negative side. The other thing I want to do while I'm down in here, I noticed this fusible link was bad unless it's been repaired once not really sure, but the cart does work and operate without that. But I thought maybe I would just go ahead and throw a new fusible link in there just to be safe. Well, I guess I'll leave it alone for now. It may be something up in the dash like the low battery light or something like that. Um, I'll trace that down later, but for right now I'm going to leave it alone. Like I said, the cart works and operates. The way it is, so it's definitely not something serious. So you can see I removed the battery from the back side of the onboard charger so that's going to be your black wire used to come through this harness go under here and plug into the back of here now we've pulled it out of the harness so it's going to go from your charger directly to your battery so you eliminate that and able to charge the Roy Powell unit uh, I do have my battery indicator on there press and hold again for three seconds that'll fire up and you can see we've got three bars left on ten bars, so each bar is ten percent. We'll get the charger on here and get this charging up while I swap the tires. Thought we would swap the tires around quick. That's better. Whoever thought those ugly wheels were a good idea, you know, that might be okay for khaki shorts and polo shirts on the golf course, but when I'm cruising the neighborhood with the dogs, we need something with a little more style. So I picked up these Mods brand wheels online. Um, these are a low pro tire, obviously, because there's no lift on this cart yet. I may change that. Um, but I thought those were pretty sharp. And I'm going for the black and white theme. However, I'm going to splash a little blue in with the seats. We're going to get that roof changed over. But 
just a big, big difference. Let's check on our battery. I've had that on for about 15 or 20 minutes. And uh, still charging up there. Of course, that's going to get mounted in the dash. But uh, everything looks good. No issues. Here we are going for the maiden voyage. I actually haven't even driven this cart yet because obviously it didn't have any batteries in it. So the salesman, I bought it at a dealer, the salesman that sold it to me didn't know if it had a speed code 3 or a speed code 4. Speed code 3 would be about 14, 15 miles an hour. Speed code 4 would be about 18 or 19 miles an hour. So the other thing I don't know about is brakes, bearing noises, anything like that. So we're going to find all that out here on our maiden voyage. Nice and quiet, a little squeaky from the windshield. Um, speed code looks to be a speed code 3, because we're only topping out about 13 miles an hour. So, I'll have to fix those squeaks. Uh, it's quiet. It's got the regen set probably at about 50%. In other words, when you let off the gas, or the throttle, I guess it's not the gas because it's electric, when you let off the gas, it immediately uh, um, stall or not stalls, but slows the cart down. So, that's how you save on your brakes. It can be a little annoying. You can have that adjusted to zero, which then it just freewheels when you let off the gas, but we will definitely have to take and get the, the other speed code put in, and other than that, it's quiet, the electric motor's quiet, so got the Roy Pow in there, so far so good. Alright, I've got updates, got a few things done off camera, got the Roof switched over to the black, got the seats done, and I have the floor mat on order. This is kind of temporary. Um, I just wanted to get this put together thus far because everything that I ordered for the custom build for this cart is six to eight weeks out. So um, I'll reuse these seats on another project because I did order new seats for this one. A completely new body, a body kit that I've never used before. It's called the Phoenix which I'm pretty excited about. I've always wanted to, but I was never patient enough to wait, them, uh, wait for them because they are a custom order. So that's where we're at for now. That's going to do it for this episode of Cart Crazy. Thanks for coming along. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is going to be a several part series uh, once I get the new body kit and the seats and everything that I've got ordered. But for now, I'm content with what, the progress that we've made. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.